If you ever want to boot a computer without altering the data on the internal drive, then you'll need to check out WinFE. In this video, we will look at how to create a bootable USB with WinFE and then use it to image a computer. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so you can become one of us. The whole idea behind WinFE or the Windows Forensic Environment is that you have a Windows environment to work within and have a forensic environment that will start all attached drives in a read-only state. Then you can use Windows-based forensic tools like FTK Imager or Xways or any other tool to image or preview the attached drives. The magic behind WinFE is that it uses Windows PE, the pre-install environment, which you've seen if you ever installed Windows. This environment is a stripped out version of Windows, so it's very fast. The developer of WinFE basically uses two registry changes to make sure that any drives are not auto-mounted, thereby making the environment forensic. The first thing we have to do is download the WinFE packages. So let's go to the WinFE website at winfe.net. And then we're gonna go ahead and click into the download link. Here you have the choice of downloading for the x86 or x64 framework or the ARM framework. So depending on whether you're using an Intel slash AMD computer or an ARM computer, click on the appropriate link. This will result in a 7 meg 7 zipped file in my downloads folder. And so I'm going to go ahead and use 7z to uncompress and extract the files into my downloads folder. I should really have created a folder named WinFE and then extracted everything into there. But I already started this recording, so here we go. Following the steps in the WinFE documentation, we need to go to the Microsoft website and download the installer stub file for Windows 10 ADK, the Assessment and Development Kit. This should be a file named adksetup.exe, which is about 2 megabytes. So let's go ahead and double click this file and accept all of the default options and then the default installation path. Notice that it warns you that it needs at least six gigs of free disk space. Now I'm gonna go ahead and answer the subsequent questions and get this thing installing. Next, you can add any Windows-based forensic software to the build. In this video, I will download a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version of FTK Imager, so I'm covered with either architecture I encounter when I use the WinFE boot disk. The process for FTK Imager is that I will need to remove any prior installation of FTK Imager. So to remove software, I can use the control panel and then software deletion. And then I select FTK Imager and I confirm that I want it removed. Once that last install has been removed, I can install the 32-bit version. And once it's done, I can navigate to C colon slash program files, parentheses x86 and parentheses backslash access data. And then I want to copy the entire FTK imager folder to where I have my WinFE framework, which is in download slash WinFE slash USB slash x86 dash x64 slash tools slash x86. Now I will uninstall the 32-bit version of FTK Imager with the control panel and then install the 64-bit version. When the install is done, I use the file explorer to go to C colon backslash program files backslash access data. And then once again, copy the entire FTK imager folder. And this time I want to copy it to the x64 path. So it's going to be under download winfe slash USB slash x86 dash x64 slash tool slash x64. To build the WinFE platform, I'm going to use the command line. So let's launch the command prompt by left-clicking on the Windows Start button, then type in CMD, 
and now I'm going to select command prompt run as administrator and this is because some of the information we want to access is restricted from a normal use at the command prompt I'm going to go ahead and CD into the WinFE folder looking at the files here we want to execute a script that actually creates the WinFE environment so I'm going to go ahead and type make when fe x64 dash x86 dot bat this build process will create the proper structure needed for a bootable win fe media and on my system it took about two and a half minutes to complete so it's decently fast and then one other thing that i want to do is i want to be able to run win fe for my ventoy boot drive so I need to build an ISO from it. So from the command line, I'm going to type make x64-x86-cd.bat. And once it's done, we can see that it created a new ISO file called winfe.iso in the ISO folder. In addition to Ventoy, I'm also going to create a standalone bootable WinFE USB thumb drive. And I'm going to prepare the USB using the disk part utility. So from the command prompt, I'm going to type disk part. And notice the change in prompt to disk part to distinguish it from the standard command prompt. Here we are going to check on the disks in the system by typing list disk. We see that there are two disks in my system. Disk 0 is the internal drive with 238 gigabytes. And then disk 1 is the 16 gig USB. So let's go ahead and select our USB by typing select disk 1. Then we're going to remove all partition and volume information by typing the command clean. And then we're going to create a new primary partition by typing create partition primary and then we will perform a quick format of that partition with the fat32 file system so we're going to type format fs equals fat32 and then quick and then now we can make the partition an active partition by typing active and then we also want to assign a drive letter to that partition by typing assign if we list the disks again by typing list disk, we see that there is an asterisk next to disk 1, which is a selected USB. And then if we type list partition, we see that there is one primary partition of 15 gigs in size at the 1 megabyte offset. And at this point, we're done with prepping the USB, so we can exit by typing exit. Now if we look at c colon slash desktop slash winfe slash usb slash x64 dash x86 we can see a bunch of folders named boot and efi sources etc we want to copy all of those folders to the root of our newly prepared usb thumb drive so i just go ahead and drag and drop with the file explorer and one last thing that we need to do is to make sure that the boot sector of the USB thumb drive is properly configured. So once again, we go to the command line and we type bootsect.exe slash nt60 e colon. And basically e is the assigned letter for my drive. Your drive may be different. Slash force slash mbr. And this is going to go ahead and make sure that this thumb drive is properly configured so it will be bootable. Now that we have the bootable USB built, let's try it out. I'm going to plug it into my Dell laptop and then I'm going to power it on. And I'm going to hold down the F12 key to select the boot device. F12 is the key for Dell's, but it may be different on your system see the website listed in the description to see what boot menu key for your computer in my case i see that in my legacy boot options i have my internal m2 sata ssd i can choose to boot off the onboard nick or usb storage devices 
and I'm going to go ahead and select USB storage device. Now the WinFE boot menu appears. We are presented with the 64-bit or 32-bit options. If you don't make a selection within 30 seconds, the default 64-bit version is booted. And I'm going to go ahead and select the 64-bit version. The first thing you will see is the language panel. You have the choice of German, UK English, US English, French, and Italian. I'm in North America, so I will select US English. Next, we get a warning panel about the write protection tool that comes with WinFE. Even though this is a forensic environment, there are still tools on here that can change the drives. So things like this part, device manager, disk management, those are all still there. So much like the Linux boot disk, you still have the power to make changes if you aren't careful. So go ahead and click OK to continue. The last panel we will see before we get to the WinFE environment is the Write Protect tool by Colin Ramsden. Here you need to decide which drives you want to designate as your output destination drives, to which you need to assign the read-write property. Your source or evidence drive should absolutely remain read-only. You may want to mount the evidence drive for preview or analysis if you have tools that need a logical drive to analyze. I would recommend against that, as mounting a drive will make a minor change to that drive. The WinFE boot USB should be mounted, because if you have installed tools to that drive, you will need to be mounted to access the tools. If you want to use the WinFE drive as the output drive, then you would also give that drive the read-write property. I would recommend writing to a dedicated destination drive, because then you can check that drive into evidence control once you have acquired the data and you won't want to rebuild your WinFE USB every time. So the conclusion is that my recommendations are for the destination drive to be the only one that should be mounted read-write. The source or evidence drive should not be mounted. And then the WinFE drive should be mounted read-only. And when you are done setting up the drives, hit continue. Once WinFE is fully booted, you will see the menu bar on top. The first option is File, which only has the shutdown option, which does the obvious thing. The Disk Tool menu has the Write Protect tool, which we just saw during the boot. And then the Basic Disk Imager, which is a simple imaging tool. Even WinFE itself will tell you to use another tool for imaging unless you're on an ARM system and don't have a choice of any other imaging tools. We're going to go ahead and click Close on this app. Under the Password tools are the Standard Reset and Advanced Reset options. These are paid tools, which I did not pay for, so they are not available to me. The cost is only £8, so not bad at all. See the WinFE website on how to make the purchase. But basically, the tools will remove passwords for systems from Windows 2000 through Windows 10. And it works for both local and Active Directory systems. Under the Other Tools, we can get the Command Prompt, which is the standard Windows command line interface. You can get the Network Configuration tool to connect to a wired network, in case you have a network drive that you want to use as the destination drive. You can launch Explorer++ for the file browser. You can install drivers for hardware that is not on the standard distribution. And you just need the .inf file along with any dependencies. And then you also have Notepad and Registry Editor, which are standard Windows tools. Lastly, under the Help menu, you will see the About panel. But uh, unfortunately, the Help panel just points you back to the winfe.net website. All right, so let's get down to business and image this computer. Because FTK Imager is so widely used and it's free, this is the tool that we're going to use. To launch FTK Imager, we need to make sure that our WinFE drive is mounted, or else you could have put the FTK Imager software onto the destination drive, which works as well. In my system, the WinFE drive is the C colon drive. And so in Explorer++, we can just click down the path of tools slash x64 slash FTK Imager. 
and then double click on the FTK Imager .exe icon. Once launched, we can click on the create disk image icon and then physical drive and select physical drive zero, which is the internal Samsung SSD, which is 256 gigs in size. I'm gonna go ahead and add the image destination and then select E01 so that we get a compressed image and then type in the admin information like case number, the evidence number, the unique description, and then the examiner name. After that, you'll be asked for the destination folder. And I'm gonna click browse and then choose your destination media. And then the base name for your image. And I recommend using the unique evidence number used by your laboratory. You can change the image fragment size from 1500. My lab historically used 2000 megabytes, so I will stick with that. And then for compression, I have found no significant differences, so I'm gonna leave it as the default of six. And lastly, depending on your lab policy, you can choose to encrypt your image, and I am not gonna do that. After you hit finish, we're back at the create image panel. Here you can add an overflow location if your destination drive is not large enough to hold the image. And that's a nice feature of FTK Imager. You can leave the default setting of verify image after creation. I think this is a good idea, so let's leave it be. I usually like to select pre-calculate progress stats, so I have some idea of how long the process will take. Lastly, you will have the tool generate a directory listing if you want or if your lab policy requires it. I am gonna uncheck it because I don't need the directory listing. And when we're all set, we can click start. Here you see the progress bar on top telling you the percentage until done. And you're reminded of the source and destination locations and then the amount of data processed and amount to be done with the estimate time left. Once it's done imaging, which for me took about 30 minutes, you can see that it's going back and reading back the image from the destination drive and then comparing the hash of the written data versus the hash of the data read from the original evidence. The verification is usually faster as it's quicker to read from the disk than to write to the disk. Plus, since we use compression, there's less data to read back. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the image summary to see the results. This will give you the version of the tool, all the metadata you typed in, the drive geometry, drive info, computed hash, the image start and end timestamps, and the verification timestamps. We can close this out. In this demo, I chose to use FTK Imager to image the internal drive, but with WinFE, you could use other Windows forensic tools to image or preview. So the apps that are tested include Xways, NCase, uh, the Internet Evidence Finder, Reg Ripper, etc. So why would one use a Windows FE? Well, much like its Linux boot disk counterparts, it's because it can forensically boot to a Windows machine, a Mac machine, or a Linux machine. A lot of folks like it because they like using Windows tools better than Linux tools. It boots much faster than regular Windows. It provides you with a forensic environment. A lot of times if you have a Surface Pro, this is actually a really good tool to use to image the Surface Pro. And similarly, there may be drives that are mounted in the machine that you cannot physically see or access. While well, booting it this way, the machine can definitely access those devices. For more information on Windows Forensics, watch these videos here. For more information on disabling auto mounting on Windows, watch this video here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.